Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. The 12th annual NIMH Festival will take place from July 7th through the 27th. And we're here at Urbo to bring you a sneak peek at some of this year's shows. The event was hosted by Justin Guarini. The festival runs July 7th through July 27th. NIMH passes and individual tickets are now available at nymf.org. And today we are going to present songs, selections from six full productions. Uh, these were handpicked by the lovely Jet Bender. Uh, and these are just a few of the 52 productions and things that you can see at NIMH this year. Yeah, I got a dream. You might sound crazy, so I thought you should know that I've got a dream. We started off hazy, beginning to show. Stand beside all able men, never hide from them again. Cause I got So here we are. So you kicked off today's festival yeah, preview. I did. I did. What was it like for you today? I mean, to be included amongst like all the illustrious names that are like in Nymph and all the names that have come from Nymph and all the people that performed today, you know, John Tartaglia was involved. Like, I mean, that alone was an honor. So I felt really great. So let's talk about the show you're connected with and the yeah. number you did today. So I sang Contender from Manuel, Manuel versus the Statue of Liberty. Um, the song is uh, towards the beginning of the show and it's kind of about um, he's starting to feel his like feet underneath him and his confidence to like go um, pursue his dream, you know. The show itself has to do with um, a young kid who is an illegal immigrant and wants to go to college. And so it's like him deciding that he's going to apply to college and defy all the odds and prove that he's a contender that people should take seriously. And what it means to be working on this musical and working on it here at NIMF? Personally, um, I think I'll answer the second question first. Working at NIMH has, uh, has actually been a goal of mine since I moved to New York. Um, I think the New York Musical Theatre Festival is like a really, really amazing organization. And then the piece itself means a ton to me because I myself am a first generation American citizen and uh, my mom was recently naturalized and it's it's really really difficult to become an American citizen so I, I really related to the subject matter both in the callbacks and now like performing the piece. Perfect. Do you know the dates of when your show is running here at NIMH? Yeah so our show is running um, July 21st through the 27th and we have I know the 27th is an 11 a.m. performance and then all the other performance it should be evening shows. You guys were amazing today. What was today like for you kicking off this preview here at NIM? Well, it was fun to actually be in front of people and get the energy off of the audience and all just be up there with each other and responding with each other and, and you know. That it was the vibe. first time that we got to sing one of our songs yeah. and it's the first time that anybody has seen and heard one of our arrangements. So it was like, you know, you jump in the pool and it's our first <laughs> adrenaline. time. Adrenaline. Yeah, adrenaline. It was great, great right? Yeah. What was great. it like for you today? Oh, living the dream. I mean, this is absolutely a coming out party for us. So proud and excited for these guys. Um, just amazing talent that we've been kind of seeing in the rehearsal room, but to get out in front of people and let them experience that energy, just absolutely awesome. What has this journey been like getting this here to NIMH? <laughs> 
Um, I said a little earlier that there's a thin line between genius and insanity, and we're kind of teetering close to that line, <laughs> trying to do a Broadway-style musical with, with, you know, with no instruments, but it has just been nothing short of absolutely surreal. It's been awesome. It's got to be so amazing. I mean, it's being thrown right in there, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we only had two weeks to, you know, to work out without, you know, any orchestrations, with, with just, it's just us. And there's it's something super special about this cast and the way that we just come together. I mean, you guys nailed it, I think, with oh, yeah. the community of it and how we just all came together the first day and just really were ready to work and mm -hmm. get into it. And one of the amazing things is our book writer, Vinny, I mean, we just came to her, Vinny Bailey, Vinny Bailey, we came to her and we said, here's a bunch of songs, okay, now write a story. <laughs> And, and, and that's not an easy thing to do, but she's done an absolutely masterful job. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your dates that you're running? We open on 7-7 seven, seven at 7. So we, right. we open July 7th, and we're running through July 14th at the PTC Performance Theater on West 42nd Street. Just looking at the stars up in the sky. Just looking at the stars up in the sky. Looking at the stars. Looking at the stars. Looking at the stars. Looking at the stars. What fun did you two have today? This was too ball. much fun. <laughs> this is really a ball. Yeah. I think our energy was a bit electric. Yeah. Like it just all came out. We always have so much fun working together, so to do it in front of people for the first time was really, really exhilarating. Yeah. It's amazing at Nymph because you have like so little rehearsal and you like just put the show up. Yeah. Yes, yes, and we just got into the rehearsal room working with sets and with props and with costumes. And they're still changing the script too, so, you know. It's not frozen until it's happen. frozen, right? Isn't that exciting when you're working on a brand new musical, a brand new piece, it's like it's created on you and for you, and it changes every day? Yes, I think that's what I love about working with EJ, having EJ and yeah. Peter in the room, mm -hmm. and Craig is, is so easy to work with as a director, mm -hmm. that the, the flow works, we have a great flow. We're really just having so much fun, and our cast is all made up of a bunch of characters who just we have so much fun playing off of each other it's a really welcoming environment what are you looking forward to the most with doing this musical at nymph i'm ready to share this with my goddaughter juliana Aww. she's four and i think she's gonna love this i think all ages yeah i mean my mom bought tickets to every show so <laughs> um, i'm just excited to tell this story and to have fun it's so lighthearted, but it deals with bullying and subjects that matter to everybody and we're just excited to tell the story. July 8th cannot come sooner. <laughs> so that's when you start July 8th. What are your dates? Yes, so we open on the 8th and run through the 16th. And which theater are you playing at? Uh, we're at PTC. That's an awesome theater. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, I haven't been there yet, but we, they've shown us all the pictures and everything. It's it looks beautiful amazing. space. I can't wait. Yeah. I mean, in the theater <laughs> district in New York, right? It's really cool, right? This oh, is, it's beautiful, and it's 42nd first, Street. I know, and this is my first time doing a show in the city, so it's cool. <laughs> I just can't stop laughing anymore. It's like perfect timing. This is kind of what happens when we get around each other. Watch your back, keep a watchful eye. It's time, it's time to kick some butt. You just try. You're trying hard to hurt me. You're the one who's gonna cry. So watch your back, say goodbye. How cool is this? I mean, I follow this story. I mean, this was yeah. like... Breaking news at the time, and everybody was riveted to their TV during this whole scandal. Were you too young at the time? I mean, young, uh, old enough to remember. Old enough to sure. remember. I was yeah. di a diehard Tony Harding fan. Oh, Obsessed. Yeah. Just Obsessed. young girls sitting cross legged in front of the television mm -hmm. watching everything fall down. I don't know that we were aware of yeah. the fallout and everything else, but the story and the two of them, absolutely. My mom had the National Enquirer and the People magazine, so I'd be like, oh! <laughs> Reading. It's like it, we found one. It's like Oprah's 40th birthday pajama party and Nancy and Tanya. Yeah, it's like amazing. It's like early reality, right? I mean, that whole yeah, story of exactly. what happened to them, right? Oh, sure. Totally. Sure. We but, said it's the first Kardashian, sort of. But before the age of iPhones yeah, exactly. and, you know, video recorders on your phone. So you were watching everything in real time and you had to form your opinion based on that as opposed to Twitter yeah. and Facebook chattering and talking Which about it. Even cooler. Yeah. Well, Tanya had a first, the first sex tape, really. Amazing. <laughs> All right. So, how do you research them? What did you do to like become these two ladies? Um, the documentaries, for sure. There's, there's quite a few documentaries, and our director David Alpert was amazing. He the first day of rehearsal, he had a, a whole packet prepared for us, full on dramaturgy. <laughs> 
complete dramaturgy, not only of everything that happened and articles about it and, you know, bios of all the real people, but then all this other stuff. Like, like how, what a Lutz references. was, what a everything. So we knew exactly where we were coming from. And but YouTube. A lot of YouTube. Yes. So what has been the coolest aspect of working on this musical so far for both of you? Ooh. Oh my gosh. Um, just being a part of something real you know usually yeah. when you're doing shows it's usually something that's fictional and this is something real so it, it's kind of like a weird pressure to to get it right and totally. to tell a story that everyone will like and relate to absolutely and the ice skating stuff is fun too yeah. not that we have ice yeah. but was there one specific element of each of these girls that you said to yourself I have it now I have her um We've both, I think, worked really hard on, on finding a few pinpointed things of how they actually skated. They had very specific oh, yeah. totally. styles and a couple, you know, some poses and some just the way that they carried themselves on the ice. And we both have tried really hard to emulate a bit yeah. of that. Okay, so give me your dates of when your show is in which theater. Great. We are at the Pearl Theater Company and we open uh, July 9th and we run through the 16th. Yeah. Princess, if you're ever Know that if you call, I'll come so fast. See, just give me a place to dock. My enormous platypus heart. Oh, my platypus, platypus, platypus heart, platypus heart. A dream come true to play a video villain. <laughs> it's like a yeah. thing. I know that's my laugh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, I mean, I still play the games all the time. It's like my character research is I just go home and, and play Super Mario, which, you know, it's pretty much the best research you could possibly do. <laughs> Yeah. I love what you guys do because I was from the 60s and 70s, so I was brought up on Broadway show tunes. Yeah. Yeah. So mine was the records, and yeah. my nephews all have those video games. I have no coordination with my fingers. You, you guys learn early on when, when like, you're like three and four yes. years old, right? Yes. I mean, yes. my Mario Brothers, I would like start it, he'd just fall off the cliff right away. I mean, I was done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got to have the thumb coordination. Yeah. You, I, I'm none of that. Yeah, you've got to have it going. Yeah, you used to do like <laughs> special stretches for your hand and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pro. So. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Working on a brand new musical, especially this one for NIMP, what it's meant to you guys. It, it's always a joy to get to create something from the from the ground up and you have such wonderful material to start out with. I It's been a long time since I've had such a beautiful, wonderful script. Yeah. It's so funny and has so much heart. That's the most amazing. It's a great combination. Yeah, and we have such a wonderful cast too. Oh, Every really? day it's like I wake up and I'm like, I get to go to rehearsal today. This yeah. is awesome. Well, I just talked to your cast members. Yes. How much fun are you having working on this show? It is. Uh, it's a blast, and I think everyone probably says that, but the reality is like, I wake up every morning and I'm thrilled to go to rehearsal, which we've all had shows where that's not the case. I wake up every morning and I'm like, ooh, we get to go play with silly puppets and bad guys and video video games, and it's it's a blast. Were you brought up on video games? Yes. In fact, I was that kid who um, I, I you know would make a lot of stuff. I think it's the puppet guy in me, but I would literally put shoe boxes, old shoe boxes, with like question marks and coin symbols on them around my room, and this is so sad, and I'd hang them up and I'd go around and pretend I was Mario, like jumping on the coin boxes. like. So it's always been part of my, my thing. In fact, my, the biggest punishment was when my mom would, wouldn't let me play video games. That was the biggest punishment. I had no coordination. I had none. Really? I, I was telling your cast, I was brought up on like Broadway albums, so I didn't have the video games. There were no video games in the 60s and 70s. Well, they're intense. And it's funny, I, what I find is like, it's like riding a bike. Like when you go back and you play them now, which we've been doing a lot of, it's like it, you remember all like, you got to press B three times, like all these different things that you forget about as you get older. But it's so much fun. You know, how many hats are you wearing on this show? I'm just the director. Which is which is nice, uh, but but I, Shannon Lewis is our, our incredible choreographer, and Drew uh, Fornarola and Marshall Paylet, the composers, like it's Gary Adler, our musical director. It's like the best team ever. And working here at Nymph, what it means to you? 
You know, it's it's a platform for experimentation and a platform of support. And and I, I've never felt more supported. I think because creating a musical is is very difficult, and you throw a lot of things out the door, and they're always like, great, you're going to get there, you're going to be great, and we're going to support you, and we're going to make you feel like you're ready to go. So it's it's been a lot of support. But you do it so fast too, right? It's very fast. Yeah, we have uh, people don't know this, but we have a tech the same day as our show. We have four hours of tech, and then it's like opening night. So so it's it's pretty much like get ready and go. I think because I've worked at the Muni, which yeah. does a very similar thing, it's helped me prepare for that. But I'm still like everything's like this right now. So you know. A lot of coffee. Uni was the same thing. Like there were three shows rehearsing at the same time or something, or one's on the main stage and you're on these side things yeah. and they're pulling a set down, you tech and you yeah. open. Yeah, and the only difference is they're they're for the most part their techs are overnight. These are at least during the day, but then it's like literally it's like, well we did our tech and now we open. Yeah. So but that's great because you know what it is? It's it's like going back to the, the basis and the root of theater, which is which is really important because that's how you create a great show. You make your choices and you go for it. You don't sit and think, overthink this stuff. You do it, That's make right. your choices and go, right? Yeah, I think that as a creative team, you have to trust your instincts and you have to trust what you bring to the table. And you know, like anything, some things will work, some things won't, but at least you can say that you put you put what you felt was right into it and then you just you just trust that everything else will work out. Well you're all the best at what you do. So I mean it's got you know, it all works out in the end, right? That, I, I believe that. I mean I think this team is is I mean you couldn't ask for a better team, and I, and I say that because I, I think that that's what makes a great show, is when everyone's kind of working in the yeah. same pattern, everyone's in sync, and we are. So it's it's exciting, and it's you know, and also on top of that, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun subject. So whenever we take things too seriously, which we all do in theater, we all kind of go, right, we're making a musical about video games, we're good. Like, <laughs> Now, what are your dates and what's your theater? We run July 7th through the 14th at the Alice Griffin Jewel Box Theater at the Signature Theater, Pershing Square. I think I got that right. Uh, and Which is a gorgeous theater. And uh, come see it. It's, it's, you will have a great time. If this is how it feels to die Okay, so deep love. How did this all come about? Uh, well, it was a very cold winter in Idaho, and we had uh, the, the other collaborators, the guys who, who wrote the show, they uh, had experienced uh, both severe uh, breakups with their girlfriends, and they were like, rather than going out and getting wasted, they wrote a rock opera. And Isn't that great? What creative people can do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a, it was a really interesting way to respond to it, and I think it was a very fun. Uh, it's been a fun show to do. You know, they brought me on pretty early to help them out with it, and so we've been developing it all since. So, what's the journey been like going from television to theater? Uh, the journey feels like it, it feels natural. I mean, like you know, the television is just theater with camera work. You know, it's really not not too different, and uh, especially American Idol, where you know, it's just a uh, it's a lot of people telling you where to stand and what to sing so you know it seems very similar to theater was idol scary at all at any part during the process for you yes yes uh, there were moments of, of complete terror on on idol I, I remember uh, I would say it was like it was uh, I would Elton John week I remember just being like like terrified you know we'd met Elton John and he was like playing the piano and like and I was singing along with him and and uh, and I remember just kind of like I don't know just like I forgot the lyrics you know it was just it was bad yeah very terrifying sometimes because you're thrown into it so fast like here's Elton John sing with him yeah pretty much it was like and go yeah yeah so I mean they and I think it was early enough in the season where they were they were very trying, trying very hard to get amateurs, yeah. and I was certainly one of those, and uh, and and mold them into something. And so they, uh, yeah, they brought me on, and and I was, it was a, it was a, a new experience, but a fun one, a good. It's been a great experience. And what are you looking forward to the most with doing Nymph? Uh, with Nymph, I would just like for our show to be on the radar. I hope I hope people come, and I hope they love it. You know, I I. I uh, I mean, like I said, you know, we've been doing the show for for several years out on the West Coast, and there have been a lot of people who responded really well to it, and we hope that uh, 
people here on the East Coast like, like it as much as well. Do you know what your dates are that you're running here? Yeah, we're July 17th uh, through the 24th over at the Alice Griffin Jewel Box Theater at the Pershing Square Plaza. What was today like for both of you? Well, I'm excited because part of my job as director of programming is that I get to be involved with these shows very early on, usually as far back as December and January. So this is one of the first chances where I get to watch other people experience shows that I've been living with for months. So for me, it's like getting to give a gift to other people that I've been living with for a long time now. Yeah, and I think of it as really the first day of the festival. Um, you know, there's no going back from here, and the shows are out there. Uh, various shows have different profiles depending on who's in the show and who's directing the show. Uh, so for these these shows to, to be out there, uh, really strong is is tremendous. It's exciting. It's a it's a tremendous train ride that starts, like you said, on the seventh through the twenty seventh. It yeah. just starts. It starts and then it's over, right? right? Well, we've been on this train for yeah. quite some time now, so uh, it, it's moving faster yeah. and. One of the things we talk to the shows about is just how quickly the clock is going to move yeah. once they get into rehearsal. And uh, a lot of them are in rehearsal right now. So how many are in? Was it 52? 52. So there are 22 full productions, but we have 52 events throughout the festival. So there are also educational programs, readings, concerts, all types of things to see. Is it hard to choose? It's, it's yes. desperately hard to choose. It's, um, it's a process that was committed to many, many years ago, a double-blind selection process. We got 240 submissions. All of them need to be evaluated for their merits, and all of them uh, are not possible to do at this festival. All of them are not ready, and many of them are ready for uh, various levels of production. So our job uh, is to be very honest with each uh, production about what they have and what we think they should do with it and then find the 10 that we're going to subsidize through our next link program uh, and 10 more that are going to get to do full productions and the other 10 are going to be readings and we hope they'll be here uh, next year like Calico Buffalo and 210 Amlet Avenue and I'm forgetting one Manuel. Manuel versus the Statue of Liberty. So here we are so what were you just telling me Dan? So I was telling you that the, the reason I discovered NIMS really was in 2005 when I was working with Kim on a commercial project and uh, she called me in my my office one day and said, I just got a call from Isaac Hurwitz. There's a show that needs a producer. Uh, will you do it with me? And I said, I'm so busy. I could. Okay. Uh, great. What's it about? And it She's was called. Very April. persuasive. And and I knew eventually I was going to say yes. So I just decided to say yes before the big explanation and move on from there. Yes. But yeah. That was well, the beginning. This would be so wonderful. Twelfth year. I mean, you've been yes. there from the beginning, right? Yes, I have been. It's been just like what Jen was saying. It's like from the very beginning, we just met in coffee shops every week. And as you know, and before you know it, we have a, I'm getting, you know, people to help us with opening night <laughs> in 2004. <laughs> You know. Well, let's just talk about those early years. I mean, yeah. I, I was with you then with the shows you were producing and just the love that went into NIMF. I mean, this is the 12th year. I mean, you guys have really stepped this all up. Yes, and this is, I, I produced seven shows within, yeah. the, within the 12 years as well. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's every year it's more and more um, challenges, you know, mm -hmm. especially financially. Um, so, uh, you know, but it's been, it has just progressed. I mean, it's gotten, you know, to, to where it is just because of amazing people who run the show. Uh, <laughs>